All right, how's it going, everyone? This is Keltar, and today I'm going to be playing a little bit of Clockwork Empires. Uh, it just came out on Steam a little while back. Uh, it's still very early access. Uh, a lot of the features are missing. There's no save game function, but it's got some great humor and a really good, solid foundation to what is going to be a, a humorous, steampunky city builder. Um, I would caution you if you're not looking for the early access feel at $29.99, you may want to stay away from this, but keep an eye out on it for the future. I have a feeling this game is going to be amazing when they finish it. Now, when you go to New Game, currently you can't name your colony, you can't name the Explorer, and they only give you one place you can start out at. But, you know, if you're looking to serve God and country, and, you know, maybe eat some fish people, Give it a try. All right, we'll see if it actually works for me. <laughs> like I said, it is a little buggy has been working so far. I've had it crash on me a couple of times, but hopefully we can get it going for you guys. Alright. Here we are. Now, uh, good thing to remember the space bar will pause the game for you. I like to do a lot of my building with the game paused. Uh, you start out with a load of colonists and obviously a bunch of materials. But the first thing you're always going to want to get going is food. Uh, if you have a lot of berries around, you can forage those. Uh, as well as if there's any animals. Uh, everything is controlled. You don't have individual control of the colonists themselves. They have a work crew system where you can tell the different work crews what to do. I'm just going to turn my military on and have them hunt, but the only other thing is I want just deal with food and hauling my military, that way they're not constantly busy. I do tend to like to have... a full crew at start to farm, so I'm going to set these guys literally just a farm. Now be careful though because the overseers will claim buildings. Uh, let's say you build a lumber mill later on the, li uh, the line. This guy claims that building. If I got them turned on to nothing but farming, I'll never produce any lumber to uh, build other buildings with and such. So you just gotta pay attention to what the overseers actually claim and adjust your, uh, your groups based on that. Now, first thing I'm going to do is build a stockpile up to help manage my resources. And I always want to get some farms going right away. Now the wheat, I will start growing wheat, but until you get a kitchen up, the wheat is actually rather useless to you since your people cannot eat wheat until it's actually cooked into bread. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're portioning out how much, uh, how much of your fields to grow different things. Uh, pumpkins seem to take a little longer to grow than cabbage. There we go. Unpause it. Get everyone running around. 
Uh, one nice thing is you can select a whole area, let's say, I want to chop down those trees, or as you saw, you can forage those different things. People have been complaining about the number of fish people that show up, but I've actually had several colonies that survived only because we killed so many fish people and ate them. <laughs> so, so far, uh, it's the only enemy you'll see. Uh, they do have plans later on to bring in cults and other interesting uh, things for you to uh, deal with. But right now, fish people are the only hazard besides, uh, well, your people constantly starving. Now, as any city builder, there's quite a bit of waiting at times. But the first building, once you got everything starting to go with food production that you're going to want to build, is going to be your sawmill. Because you're going to need uh, those logs to deal with pretty much any other building that you're going to do. You're going to need those, lo uh, well, lumber for it. Now, you can't take direct control of your military, but you can use this rally point to send troops. It'll tell all your troops that aren't busy right now to go to that point. It's about the most control you have over the actual fighting of your, uh, your citizens, but it can be very useful. And also, I truly find it a easier way to explore than using the uh, the explore button they give you. And then once you want to get rid of it, you just click on it and remove rally point. Ah, oh, don't run. Don't run. Kill the fish person. Now you have to be careful, your colonists can die. Kind of, oh, there we go. Ah, he got him. Good, good. Fish people are really aggressive right now. They've talked about later once there's other hazards toning it down a little bit. But, like I said, at this point, it actually provides us food source if your people start to get really hungry, so I'm not truly complaining at the moment. I have run into a problem where I can't remove tree stumps, which is slightly annoying, but nothing, nothing major. Nothing major to be concerned about. Now the building's interesting, you gotta lay out your floor plan, then once you do that, then you actually place the individual items. Which I really like this system, it, it uh, gives you kind of a more unique feeling to your, your town than most games give you where everything's, ah, everything's cookie cutter. Sure there's probably a way to, to delete items if you put them in the wrong spot, but currently I don't know it. Now I'm going to put three workbenches in. I probably won't use all three initially, but it'll be nice to have in the future. Then they have different uh, different items you can put in. I'll put a power saw in, even though I'm not going to need it right now. And then once you hit done, your guys will eventually start to build it. And if you pay attention to your work crews, it'll actually show which jobs they're on. Like I said, every time you build a workshop, though, just be very careful. Check and see which one of your work crews took it over. Because like I have right now, if it was my farming crew that took it over, they'll keep farming. And, you know, I won't notice anything's wrong, except for I'll never have my lumber mill actually in operation. Just something you got to pay attention to.
Now, it's kind of neat. In the future, the AI is actually going to affect it. They'll have these memories where things that have happened recently will actually affect their uh, their future actions. It's kind of neat. And each person has three traits uh, that'll show, you know, just something about them. Jack of all trades. <laughs> Uh, it's strange. <laughs> it's it's just some some are kind of neat. It, the, there's a whole level of comedy in this game that's just phenomenal. I, I can't wait for them to get further in uh, into the production for it. Now, once you get a workshop finished, it's as simple as just clicking it to tell how many of the items you'd like them to build. Unfortunately, I have noticed that the plus and minus doesn't actually work right now, but you can click on it and the cancel does work if you, you know, do too many. Now you can look. Uh, okay, so she took it over. Right here. And once they take it over, it seems like they will always control that workshop. So now I know these guys are going to be in there. I'm going to take them off everything besides building, hauling, and working the workshop. Not sure if this is the best idea. It's what I've been using so far. It seems to work. Now, you'll be able to accept more people. This can bite you in the butt, obviously, because you'll need more food to provide them all. You can actually turn them down. I've been trying to take them each time. Never tell what you're going to get. Sometimes you'll get more troops, more regular people. It all depends. Just throws random stuff at you. Get that going. Each class of citizens you have will obviously eventually need a home. And we'll get uh, that whole center of the map is all kind of flubbed up. Now, of course, your people like to sleep, <laughs> as I, I hope we all do, or at least try to. So, you're going to need to build a lower class home for all your worker bees so they can sleep. From what I noticed, it doesn't matter if the green dots overlap. You'll still be able to access it from that point. And your people really do enjoy sitting down and being able to eat a meal as well. So tables and chairs are definitely a good thing. Yeah. Well, I'll leave it at six for now. Pull a couple of tables and chairs in here. And your people all happily share the space. 
Uh, eventually you'll need to build more, of course. Now keep in mind, of course, the top items are required and necessary in the house. The optional ones will just make your people happier for you. Which, keeping them happy is probably a good thing, since, you know, later on you'll probably be starving them to death and many other horrible, horrible things, so... Now the maps are randomly generated so each time you play it will be different and unfortunately with the no save function right now there's no way to save your progress from day to day so that is kind of a drawback but it's still a lot of fun. I can see a lot of potential in it right now. going so I can move on to my next item I need to build I've tried several different things if you build too many fields it seems like it's really hard to get them to keep up with it because after a while if the guys don't tend the field the food will spoil and will turn into this just brown grass looking stuff so uh, I mean really find the medium between how many workers you have working it and how many fields you have. And you might also want to be careful since you do have less ability to micromanage in this than some other games you might want to be careful of how much stuff you select at once that can become a real negative at times if you queue up one too many things you will get these supply drops once in a while um, I was taking the construction materials the longest thing but just to help keep up I've noticed that taking the food probably isn't a bad idea. What the heck is that? Oh, I don't know. At least taking the food until you can get a, a kitchen up and running and because uh, cooked food provides more uh, nutritional value, of course. So that way that, you know, out of less food, your uh, colonists will be able to survive longer. So obviously the kitchen is important, but we need the planks to build that as well as we need a ceramics workshop so we can make uh, stone blocks for the ovens. Which I didn't realize we needed this at first, and it kind of bit me in the butt because I had a bunch of uh, ovens that I couldn't make, unfortunately. And just to remind you, the people are just kind of staying there walking in places because I keep pausing the game. You can tell if this is colored, it's uh, unpaused. If it's uh, black and white, it'll be paused. 
Although I have noticed a few times it will take a bit to catch up. And, um, you know, it'll, it'll show the people walking in place the same way. That's a glitch I haven't seen yet. That building's built, but I can't see the walls. So that's a new glitch, but... Extreme early access. Like I said, if you're planning on getting this, expect glitches. But, like I said, as you can see, I mean, it's... It's going to be a really good game. It's Once you get some polish and, you know, some more work in it, uh, all the features included, it is going to be really good. I actually extremely enjoy myself with it at the moment and as you can see it's not finished yet For some reason the stumps aren't letting me remove them right now. Really it's just aesthetically. When you build the house over them it'll show a small stump coming up through them. Uh, so I mean it's not really a major issue. That is weird though. It's the first time I've seen that. Now I do gotta admit it'd be kinda nice so you can toggle the building view so it keeps the roof on or takes it off when you click over it. But um, I kind of hope in the future of the lad where you can take the walls out too just so you can see in between the buildings a little better. Um, that's nitpicking a little bit. It's definitely not crucial. But it would be kind of a nice feature to see eventually. And I got another... Overseer. So you never know what you're going to get when you click on that. I got another Overseer that time. I'm actually doing fairly well this time, keeping up with food. That's, I mean, that should be your major priority when you first start this, is just make sure you have enough food. Uh, 
I can tell you all the times I've really lost have been because I ran out of food, my people couldn't eat. All started to starve and die. Got that done. Once that's done, I can start making stone blocks out of my stone and then start working on my kitchen. So clearing stuff is an extreme big deal, it just looks tacky, so I try and do it. See, like I said, if they don't tend to them in time, they'll die off on you. Can make it kind of a pain juggling, trying to get food in. That's why I think until you get the, uh, the kitchen going, taking food early on is not a bad idea for the supply drops. I've seen people that, you know, obviously have differing opinion, but I think food is probably your best idea to take. See right where I had before. Now my iron boots guy took over that. So unfortunately, now all my farmers will still farm, but they didn't have the factory turned on. So unfortunately, the factory itself won't work. So I'm just going to shift this down. Still early, early access. You get uh, errors. I've had it crash out on me a few times. We'll see. Hopefully I can get a good little while longer. At least get the kitchen up and running. Show you the kitchen. Uh, maybe get through a few more days. I think I've got uh, 13 or 14 in my last game. But I lost that one because all my guys starved. Yeah, it actually did crash out on me. Oh, the fishy people are going to raid me, huh? Well, I will shoot them. 
That is, uh, the good old American thing to do. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Alright, soldiers, get down there and help him. I may lose a soldier here. Oh, yep, I lost the soldier. Oh, it was my overseer, too. That's not good. That is not good at all. So now, since I lost the overseer, it seems like the rest of my guys are... They have no one to tell them what to do, and they're going to be completely lost. So, of course, they're not going to fight with a darn. Oh, that could be a brutal loss. That could definitely be a brutal loss. Now, I'm not sure if they'll actually bury him yet or not. Yep, there we go. Give the fallen soldier their uh, proper burial up there. Oh, that stinks. Oh, well. Trying to colonize the fishy people's land could be dangerous. Down to the next thing I'm gonna need to build. That's some more close stock pile. Really. And yes, I know I've I make my buildings huge. Looks like I have abs, big stone ovens. And just because I was a cook for a year, we'll add a little amenities. years, I should say. There you go. Go, people, go. <sighs> Alright, let's see what we got going on here. Aha, good, I got a new officer.
Oh. And there we go. Clockwork Empires has crashed on us. Well, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed what I've been able to show you. Uh, as always, this has been Keltarn, and uh, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment. If there's any games you're interested in seeing, let me know. I also stream all these videos on uh, Twitch TV uh, slash Keltarn. Feel free to join in, bullshit with me while I'm playing, ask me any questions. You know, always here to have a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and have a great day, you guys.